Hello, hello. Welcome back to a Cyrusid tutorial. I decided to update this for 2.0, so let's go over stuff really quick. I won't waste your time. So, starting off, I have just like a nice little rail network set up that I'll be showing off how things work. But starting off, when you start Cybersyn, you're going to want to make some depots, right? So this is the design I go with, just add a bunch of train or basically a bunch of stops lined up in this little loop, right? And you're going to go into these combinators, which are the main thing you need in this mod. They need to be touching a train station with the little yellow area that you can see, and they need to be powered. As long as they are, it will interact with the train station and make it part of the network, right? So first step, you're going to see there's a few modes in here. We have station, depot, refueler, station control, wagon control. I'm only going to be over, uh, going over the first three since this is a basic tutorial and I don't know how the others work, to be honest. But you don't need them really, unless you're doing more advanced stuff. Starting off, depots. Depots are basically where your trains are going to dock when they're not taking orders. So if you want an analogy, think of it as ro um, ro robots hanging in a roboport waiting for orders, right? So there's two settings here. Acquire same depot. This is basically making sure that if a train is done with this thing, it will always go back to this depot and no other depot, right? And then there's Depot Bypass, which is basically they don't have to park here to receive new orders. If they finish their order, they can just go right out after if this is checked. But they will still return to refuelers if not, right? I would just leave both settings enabled unless you have a reason not to. So how do you add a train to your network? Very simple. All you're going to do, you're going to place a train down, place some wagons, get some fuel, which I should have had here. You throw some fuel in. And what you're going to do is... You're going to look at the station, right? This one's called Beamer 91, and you're going to just set the only station to Beamer 91, right? And then after it's, it'll just sit here basically and wait for orders, right? So I'll add like, you know, you could just add like, I'm just going to add three for the sake of it. And then I'll add one with cargo uh, fluid wagon since I'm going to be showing that off since someone asked about it last time, right? So like I said, pretty simple. Just all set to the same thing. And the key is they have to be going to the station. They have to have that one second of inactivity. If they don't, they are not added to the network, right? So next thing, refueler, right? It does exactly what you think. It basically makes it that if a train is low on fuel while it's doing its job, it will stop here first before going back to the depot. So to be honest, probably not the best spot to have it next to the depots because it's going to have to go around, but still you could put it wherever. It's pretty simple. You just set it as refueler and just put a, I would do like a requester chest and just have fuel go into the train. So fairly simple, not too difficult, right? So let's get into actual requesting. So let's see, I think I have a iron station over here. Yes. Okay. So this is an iron station. Yeah. I'm using infinity chest. It's just to demonstrate. So basically what you're going to want to do is when you want to set up a station, right? You're going to go over here. You're going to go to station. And I would make sure to purposely set provider request only since that tells it basically if a train can pick up from this area or deposit at this area, right? When you're doing the provide only station, meaning it's providing material to the network, think like um, logistics red chest basically does that, right? You don't really have to worry about any of these options. I mean, automatic allow list you might want to mess with. Basically, it makes it that only trains are only added if they fit the allow list, meaning they have enough capacity and meet the capacity of the station to load and unload. So honestly, you could disable it. It's not gonna really matter too much, but you might not get full train loads if you do that. Uh, inactivity condition, when you're looking at station, is basically if, you have to, if you're required to wait for inactivity even when an order's been fulfilled, and that's just for inserters getting the item stuck if you wanna prevent that, I wouldn't worry about it. And then there's stack thresholds, which we'll go over when we go over request only, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Right, so how do you tell Cybersyn that you have iron here? Well, as you can see, it's fairly simple. You're gonna hook up all your chests filled with whatever product you have with circuits. So I did green circuits here. You hook them all up together and then you attach it to the back of the Cybersyn Combinator. This is now telling the Cybersyn network, hey, I have 57K iron plates for pickup here for whatever station needs it, right? So that's step one, right? That's, that's the requester. Now, if you want or sorry, that's the provider. If you want to request materials, so for example, I have this nice little cute circuit set up here and we need iron, right? So if I want iron, you're gonna do the similar thing, right? So going first with the CyberSim Combinator, you're gonna want it on request only, right? Because you only wanna request materials here. Then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna check stack thresholds if you're messing with items. So basically, 
what it's going to do is when you put a request threshold, it's interpreted as the amount of stacks your trains can carry rather than the amount of items. This is very useful to use since you don't want to have to specify like a bunch of different things. Like for example, stone would have a different amount of, uh, of uh, materials that a train could carry compared to iron because they have different stack sizes. So you want stack thresholds so you could just say arbitrarily, this is how many stacks the train can carry. Now, why does this matter? This is because in order to request stuff, you need this combinator here. This combinator right here is going to tell the network what it needs, right? So starting with the first one, you were required to have this request threshold signal. This is basically telling Cybersyn, hey, the train that needs to come to this station needs to have, will have, uh, or must have X amount of capacity. So we're putting 80 for here because we have two cargo wagons and two cargo wagons can hold 80 stacks of an item. And that's where the relevant uh, relevancy of stack thresholds come in. You, we set it so we can say it's 80. If you didn't do that, then you would need to specifically set the amount of material that could fit in all the cargo wagons of your train, which I'll show off for the liquids in a bit, right? Then you need to request your items. So for here, I'm saying I want negative 20K iron plates here and negative 20K copper plates, right? And what this is gonna do is basically when you hook this up to the signal network, it's gonna just add the values from the chest with the negative values here and if it reaches a positive value, then it won't request anymore, basically, right? But it'll also make sure there's enough space in the chest. So if you see, we hook this up immediately after we do this, two trains are dispatched. And you know why two trains were dispatched? Because I forgot to set train limit to one. OK, so don't do what I did. You want to set train limit to one, because if you don't, you'll have stupid things like this happen. So I would recommend setting the train station limit to one so only one train is dispatched because otherwise, yes, it will send out multiple trains. That also shows that my stacker design is bad, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So as you see, the train was automatically assigned a schedule to go to Star Rider, which is whatever this station is, to collect 80K or 8K iron plates, which is the 80 stacks because it stacks to 100. It's then gonna go to just some arbitrary point, And then it's gonna go to Dr. Mobius, which is this station over here, right? and it's gonna drop off the iron. So we'll just watch that happen real quick. Comes over and it will start dropping off the iron. Once this train is done, it will dispatch another train or just dispatch the same train to pick up more iron till the station's filled. Now this is the nice part. Normally, if you wanted to do multiple items at a stop, it would be really annoying. But with Cybersyn, it's easy. It won't, the strength station limit's still one and it will automatically dispatch that copper train after. It's not doing it right now because we don't have copper. To set up copper, I have a station up here. We're gonna do the same thing. As you can see, provide only, allowed list is still on. We have all the things hooked up to the green wire. And the last thing we needed to do was, uh, actually, why isn't this working? Oh, there you go. Sorry, okay, so that's why. It was actually sending a train for copper. It was simply because I set the train limit to one. So as you can see, now we're getting copper. And it's gonna do the same exact thing and get out of here. And my signals are fucked up again. How did I fuck this? Oh, that's how. All right, make sure you do your signals right, kids. <laughs> okay, so that's the very basics of CyberSend. Now I'm gonna really quickly show how fluids work because somebody asked in the last video how to do it. So fairly simple. We have a bunch of fluid tanks here with crude oil and we wanna transport it down here to this station, right? So same thing. I'm gonna hook up all the storage tanks together, put it on a wire, put it here. This is now telling it, hey, I want 20K, I have 20K crude oil here, right? Provide only automatic thing, don't gotta worry about it, right? To make this work, make sure you actually have a fluid train. It won't work with a cargo wagon. You actually need a fluid train set in the network to work. Just specifying that ahead of time, right? Now, if you come down here, all you're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing. So now you're gonna see me set it up real time. Request only, we don't care about the stack thresholds in this case because it's fluid trains. The fluids will always be consistent in the train. We are using two fluid wagons. So 25, sorry, yeah, it's changed actually. 50K plus 50K is 100K. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna go to the CyberSyn request threshold and we're gonna set it to 100K. Since the two cargo wagons, or sorry, the two fluid wagons can hold 100K fluid in total. So that's how you do that. Then I'm gonna say, I have, let's see, I have about 200K worth of storage. I'm gonna say I want 150K. Actually, I'm gonna say 100, yeah, 150K. 
Or say we want 150k. Oh, that's got to be a negative number or it won't request it. Right? We're going to do the same thing. Hook up your fluid tanks. If you don't, then you're just going to have trains stuck here. Hook it up to the network. Like so. Hook this up. Boom. You're going to immediately see the fluid train, fluid wagon. Sorry. The fluid wagon goes off. It's going to come up here. It's going to get pumped full of crude oil very quickly using the millions of pumps I placed. Okay, it's not as fast as it was before. And, and then it's going to come down here. And it will deposit the fluids. Again, I want to reiterate. Make sure you set the enable train limit to 1 unless you have specifically like stackers for it or whatnot. And as you can see over here though, the copper station, it's been working perfectly. We have copper here, we have iron here. We're making green circuits that are getting voided just for the sake of demonstration. I just wanted to add one other thing that I forgot to cover originally when I was recording. Um, there is a GUI. Fun fact, if you go to settings, other, or sorry, <laughs> mod settings, and you go to startup, there is a in-dev cyber manager or cyber sin manager, right? I personally haven't messed with it, but it's I've heard it's apparently similar to LTN and you can get a bunch of different stuff. So I guess it's inventory of trains, the different stations and trains. To be honest, I don't really know how this works, but this might be a useful thing for anybody that wants like a uh, quick look at a GUI of what's actually going on with the network. So just want to throw it out there, there is a GUI. You just have to enable it in the settings. It's not by default. So with that, I hope this tutorial helped you guys. If you have any questions, you can always drop them in the YouTube comments. You can message me on Discord, or you can join the CyberSyn Discord linked in the description along with mine. Anyway, hopefully this, guys, uh, this was a helpful guide for you, and, and I wish you luck with your factory. Bye!